Hi everyone, and welcome to this mini lecture on the instructor's approach to teaching. So this little lecture is, again, like some of the others, not required viewing, but if you're looking to get a better, a better understanding of how I approach teaching and think about learning for my students, uh, this will hopefully give you some insight. So the first thing that I always view and understand about people and students is that everyone can learn. Um, I don't see us as fixed beings without the ability to change. Uh, we are actually constantly changing uh, on an internal level. We're never static. If we think about how the body how the body works, it's filled with a lot of changes going on. Um, we're processing food where our brains are, are hyperactive and you have neurons firing off every second to whether it's to conduct emotion or to think or to you know react that or, or to process information that we're hearing or we're seeing. Um, we're constantly changing and so nothing really bars us from learning new things other than our resistance to learn new things. Uh, and I think this is important for students to appreciate and recognize is that they will come up to topics that they really don't like, but that doesn't mean they can't learn it. Um, I have a lot of students who say, I can't learn this or I can't learn that. And I think often their resistance is a bigger barrier to actual learning than what it would take to learn that subject. So the important thing to remember is that everyone can learn. Um, don't trap yourself into believing you can't learn a particular thing or just in general. However, with that said, uh, it doesn't mean that learning is easy. Um, and in fact, when something is hard, uh, particularly around learning, that doesn't necessarily mean, that's not a bad thing. Um, because we often, when something's hard, it's because it's making us change, it's making us see things differently, it's challenging us. And that's actually where a lot of learning takes place, is when you're being challenged. So if you come into a course, and it is a hard course, recognize that's not necessarily a failure of learning. That might actually be learning itself, because learning sometimes is going to be hard. For instance, in, in many of my courses, I hear from students that, you know, I'm not a reader. And I think about that, and, and I hear the students, but I think they sometimes are underselling themselves. Because they actually, many of us are, are really good readers, uh, whether we realize it or not. Because when we think about all the different times we analyze something that's written, we come to start to realize, wow, I actually, maybe I do, you know, have much better reading skills than I think than I think I do. And a great example of this is how many of us have, at some point, looked at a text message and really started to break it down and really started to try to understand, okay, what did he exactly mean by say by saying this? You know, do, when he said all right, what did he mean to that? by that? Did he mean that what I said was alright? Um, that he's alright? That's actually, you're doing what we would call textual analysis. You're, you're breaking down and you're really trying to get underneath. So you are a reader and you will actually be able to do the things we're doing in this course. You know, it's important to realize that, especially in the digital age, you spend an awful lot of your time reading and writing. Whether you're sending text messages, instant messages, whether you are uploaded, updating your Facebook, you know, if you're, you're posting something on Facebook, if you're sending out a tweet, if you're hashtagging, you, you know, hashtagging a picture, you are writing. And that's important to remember. You have a lot of more, a lot more experience in writing than you give yourself credit otherwise. And you have a lot more experience in reading than you might give yourself otherwise. Um, but all that being said, you know, even when the reading or the writing or whatever the learning task at hand is is challenging, that's okay. It's supposed to be. So, I really do want my students to enjoy 
my courses. Um, I think that, you know, for me, that there's an important part of enjoying and learning. Um, but more importantly, I, I, my focus is on helping them to understand and push their intellectual capacities. Um, I want students to come out of my courses better understanding not just the content, but having a skill set that they can take elsewhere. Um, and I don't expect my students to have the same skill set as I do. Uh, I, certainly, I have I have studied the subject matter at hand for years, and many of the things that I ask of my students, I've been doing for years. I have a lot of professional experience in what I'm teaching, so I don't expect students to have that same skill set. I don't expect them to be able to do the things that I do. However, I do hope by the end of the course that students are able to push themselves and to become more capable at critically reading, at nuanced argument, and analytical writing. I'm not going to expect you to, you know, give me this post-Freudian analysis of some passage, but I am, I am looking for you to be able to give me more than what you could have at the beginning of the semester. I think I can best compare my teaching approach to a physical trainer. And what I mean by that is if you go to a physical trainer and you know day one he puts you through some workout, day two he puts you through another workout, day three you show up and he says, ah, you know what? no workout today. Here, you know, have a have a Twinkie. You're more than likely going to fire that physical trainer because you haven't hired them and you're not working with them so you can so he can tell you don't work out and have a Twinkie. You're hiring them to help physically train you. Well, as an instructor, I'm doing the same thing, but I'm a mental trainer. I'm helping you to train your brain. And so you do need to understand that I'm going to expect a lot from you. I'm not going to necessarily, you know, create anything or do anything that is impossible. And I'm going to make sure I help and guide you along the way. But I am here to help push you, to help get you to where you want to be by the end of the course or you get to where what the expectations of the course are and make sure you meet those expectations so I do have to continually assess where you are intellectually and I do that often through discussions and further questioning within the class within uh, within the discussions or within the class um, all of this is to push you because that's what you've done. You've signed up for college. You've said, okay, college is, is about attaining a degree, and it's about attaining that degree through intellectual exercises. And I get through those intellectual exercises by having these mental trainers, instructors, who are going to get me there by pushing me, by encouraging me, by guiding me. And so that's how I see, and that's what I think about when I step into the classroom. I want students to succeed and we'll work with them to make sure that happens, but that is contingent upon the college education contract. And what is the college education contract? It is, I will do the work expected of me, which includes to guide students towards meaningful text, in-depth analysis, and deeper meaning, to communicate regularly about changes or issues in the classroom, and to evaluate your assignments in a timely manner. However, this only this is a contract, so this is what I need to do, but it only works if the students do what's expected of them, which is come to either the face-to-face -face or the online class prepared to engage in discussion, purposefully reading the works assigned. Right? It's not just saying you read them or trying to read a brief summation on Wikipedia, it's actually try actually reading them, noting them, annotating them, thinking about them. Doing the assignments in a timely fashion, right? Whatever the whatever the activities are expected of you, making sure you do them by the time that they're expected to be done. And communicate when you are having personal personal or academic trouble. 
This is a big one that students don't always do, but it is important to communicate with your instructor if you're having trouble. And that's personal or academic because as an instructor, I don't know the difference unless you explain it to me. If you're passing in papers late, do, is that academic trouble because you're having problems with what the content is? Or is it personal trouble because something has gone wrong at home or with your personal life? Indicating what those are helps me make sense of it, and it helps me figure out how to work with you to make sure you get what what needs to get done. So this is that you know this is that college education contract that I'm happy to do what I what I show up above, but that's dependent upon the students doing what is below. That you're adults, you've come into this you know come into this college of your own free will, and these are the things that are expected of you. And this this is true not just in my class, but in every class. And you'll find that if you do what's expected of you and you communicate with that instructor, uh, you're you're bound to have a better rapport and better opportunities to, you know, achieve what it is that you're looking to achieve. Alright, if you have any questions, please let me know, and thank you for listening.